question uh, from Figure One. Um, so figure One is one of my favorite uh, cars in the Toronto area. A bunch of clinicians uh, on the war helping each other, building a social network. Uh, growing like gangbusters, and uh, their use of ML is just at uh, its basic stage. So I'm hoping that this community can help. Thank you. Uh, Joshua is a uh, medical internist uh, and uh, founder of Figure One and their chief medical officer. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for um, letting me uh, speak to you. This is such an honor. Um, uh, so first, um, I just want to say that I'm uh, one of the co-founders, and another one of my co-founders is here. Um, so if you have questions about tech-related stuff, he's our CTO. I'm the medical guy. Um, and um, off we go. So Figure One is a platform. It's a network of healthcare professionals who work together to look at images and cases and discuss them, to teach each other, to learn from each other, and to work together and collaborate. Um, currently, um, we have um, over 1.5 million healthcare professionals around the world in 190 countries who are uh, using this platform uh, to upload and look at cases and discuss them. So this is all uh, stuff done by humans, um, but I think there's a lot of potential for machines to help. Um, one of the things that one of our investors has um, said to me, and I, I've very strongly come around to this belief, is that the future of medicine is not going to be, uh, it's certainly not going to be doctors alone, but it also isn't going to be machines alone. It's going to be some form of doctor-machine collaboration. Um, and I think that that's one of the steps that uh, I want to be able to see move forward through Figure One. We created this because so many doctors are now using their phones at work. And this is a behavior that I identified amongst my colleagues and my peers in the hospital. People are taking pictures of cases, describing them, and sending those pictures to colleagues to ask for opinions, ask for help, to document, describe, etc. And this was, um, this was the foundation of some research that I did. And uh, we discovered that this behavior is uh, rampant, <laughs> or um, popular at least, amongst uh, young physicians. And so uh, creating a network or a place where people could put all these images at the same place, make sure that the privacy protections were in place to make sure that we protect patients' uh, protected health information, and uh, making sure that all of those great discussions and those, those educational assets all get uh, put in a place where they can be archived, indexed, uh, and searched. Um, and so this is essentially what uh, a single post looks like. Uh, there's, of course, um, uh, many thousands of these uh, that you can just sort of pull up and look through if you go to figure one. Um, and I think that there's uh, a lot of opportunity, and I'm going to describe two of the main opportunities uh, that we're thinking about right now for you guys. So this is the title of my talk, uh, because I think that uh, when we start taking pictures, it's going to be the machines who are going to be looking at them more than the people will in the future. Um, in the hospital as a whole, there is a tremendous amount of processing surplus on the mobile devices that we carry around. And that was part of uh, um, the, the strategy behind creating Figure One, that we want a platform to be able to take jobs away from uh, old, legacy, unconnected devices in the hospital and say, we've got some of the best image sensors that are available on our phones. Let's use our phones with all this surplus processing power and all of this um, imaging and connectivity, excuse me, and use that to the benefit for our patients. So this is one of the examples uh, that we are currently thinking about. This is an electrocardiogram. And electrocardiograms are essentially electrical representations of the electrical rhythm of your heart. Um, they are they're printed out on machines, and frequently there is a pre uh, a machine interpretation that accompanies this when it gets printed out. Right? These are done in the emergency room when anybody complains of anything uh, on or about their chest or abdomen. So you can imagine that's lots and lots of them through emergency departments. In family physicians' offices, they're frequently done as screening tests. And the way these are currently interpreted is uh, the machine's interpretation is ignored strategically. Um, I'll explain that in a second. And the package of cardiograms that are done that day gets sent to a person uh, like me. I've been in this job. You get a pile of them, and you read through them, 
and you make a couple of notes on the top, or you make a check mark if it's normal, and then you move on. Uh, this process, often it's a stack of ECGs that get put in an envelope, that envelope gets picked up by a driver, dropped off at somebody else's office. Somebody reads them, puts them back in the envelope, sends them back to the place they came from, and you get your results. So it's 24, 48 hours uh, before you get the actual interpretation. When uh, medical learners are taught to interpret ECGs, the first rule is ignore <laughs> everything the machine says. And the reason why is the algorithms, though they're really good at identifying normal, anything that's abnormal uh, can be misinterpreted, and the machines are typically unreliable. Um, and often this is not a piece of hardware that is replaced very frequently or updated ever. So the machines that I uh, use to get the ECGs for the patients that I look after could be 20 years old and are using the algorithm that's built into the machine. So um, <coughs> my co-founders and I think that there's an opportunity in this exact space. And what we've done, uh, I'll show you a little bit of what we've done already. And it's just uh, just using um, OpenCV, uh, uh, the computer vision open source library, to remove the background and then redraw the, um, the, the um, signal as a vector, and then take data, and essentially, so this is now, still looks very, it looks very nice and clean, this is appealing to look at, uh, but it's also that now we have this data encoded uh, as mathematics, essentially. And so I think that there's an opportunity for us to take these even, even a step further and be able to uh, derive an algorithm to be able to deliver a more appropriate um, interpretation, be able to surface that interpretation to people who can confirm it, and then subsequently uh, return that to the user who has uploaded this, and that could take a minute. So we're taking something that takes 24, 48 hours, and now taking it to something that takes a minute to do. And this is particularly, I think, uh, useful for people who want to know right now if they're having a heart attack. I mean, there's certainly there are lab tests and other things that you can do, but th I think that there's something really special that we can do here. Um, and it's actually something that we are looking to hire somebody to do, either by consulting or by bringing them on staff, to be able to help us with this project right now. So if anybody knows anybody, then you know, please let us know. Um, this is the second project. The uh, is something called MeSH. Um, so for those of you who have done research in the health sciences, uh, area, you'll know that MeSH is the Medical Subject Headings Database, and it's published by the National Library of Medicine. This is uh, the um, set of keywords. There's over 27,000 keywords. Uh, if you actually break them up into the individual words, it's almost, it's closer to 100,000. But uh, these are the terms that are used to categorize uh, over 5,000 journals worth of medical information as it enters the National Library of Medicine's uh, database. So this is what we use for deciding what's important to us when we're doing research. And what we're starting to do is introduce uh, this data um, into our images and our cases and trying to find out what the associations are between the people who are looking at the images and what the person who's posting the image is looking for. So um, this, by the way, is um, a visual representation of the connectedness of the terms. <coughs> this is in the whole database. This is okay. This is the code, this is the entire database. Um, I think it's nice looking. But, um, the the thinking is that if we know that you're the type of healthcare professional who is good at answering topics in this realm, and we know that somebody has just posted a case in that same domain, we should be able to match the person who is posting the case with the person who can answer that case and who is likely to do it now because they're awake and they're in a part of the world that. Uh, they'll be able to help you. And so, really, because what we're doing is replace wearing these pagers, which people still do in healthcare. Um, so we want to take the asynchronous communication away from being this model and convert it to this model, because I think it's going to be faster, more efficient, and more helpful for patients. Um, this, is, this is the abiding dream, uh, essentially, to be able to take a case where you don't even have to say, I need help from a cardiologist, uh, when you post a case, but just load it up, and somebody who knows exactly what that that that, that uh, case is all about and knows how to help you, and they might not be a cardiologist, but they're going to get you the right answer. Um, that, to me, I think would be a uh, an incredible thing that we could offer to healthcare professionals around the world, 
if you have a case you don't know, you just load it up and somebody will help you and we'll be able to find the right person. So that's uh, what we're working on uh, at Figure One and just a couple of things uh, that are uh, coming down the pipeline. So thanks very much.